what is a food forest? Well, we're all quite familiar with forests and forests as an ecosystem with great diversity of plants, animals and fungi all harmonizing together and interreacting in many, many niches and layers designed by nature, maintained as a system in perfect balance. Well, imagine that as a system that produces food. The majority of the elements in that system being productive. That's a food forest. So by understanding how nature designs forest systems so they're self-maintaining, self-replicating, we can model that system with productive species so that we can produce food in the most sustainable way with the minimum amount of input for the maximum amount of output anywhere in the world. That's a food forest system that we can actually design and work with in long-term and permanent situations. All forests have layers. So you start off with a canopy layer. That's the top of the forest. Then you have understory layers. And under those, you have bush and shrub layers, going down to herbaceous layers, which are non-woody plants. And then you have a root yield. You have plants that actually have large, starchy roots. And then on the ground, you have ground covers. And you also have a vertical layer of climbers. Now, all forests have those layers. In the tropics, you can have emergent palms and understory palms, and you can have slight variations in different climates, but you have a basic set of layers that occupy all the space. When we design a food forest, we put that layering system into action to our benefit for production and maintenance through function. Here in the subtropics, you have tamarillo as an understory, and you have taro and cocoa yam and cassava as a root yield. That changes from climate to climate. Then you have understory productive trees like fijoa, guava, and citrus, and large herbs like bananas. And then you have support species like the ice cream bean and the tipuana tipu and casuarina. They're large trees, but they continue to support the forest by cycling nutrient. You also have understory nitrogen fixers, like the acacias and the leucina and the cassia and albizia species. They're all really good, fast-functioning, fast-carbon pathways that fix nitrogen and can be chopped to the ground for mulch as the space that they're occupying can be taken up by the productive species. Here we have rose apples, mulberry, we have large legume trees and we have large fruit trees. So you have jackfruit, the largest fruit in the world. We have bunya pine, a very large nut, but we also have pecan, which is a nut tree here that's also deciduous, loses its leaves in winter. Then we have your classic mango as a large overstory tree. These are all space occupiers in a system that's incredibly stable when all the layers
We're sitting in a food forest that's been recovered by ducks. This section here was well out of maintenance. They had quite a lot of long clumping grasses and unwanted plants we call weeds. We've put a fence around it, a temporary fence, electric fence, but we haven't even electrified it. We've put in a hundred or so Muscovy ducks. In just over three weeks, they've totally changed the area. They've eaten most of the green material. They've flattened out the grasses. They've manured the ground. They've conditioned the soil and it's ready for replanting with the support species and interplants and fruit trees where there's gaps. Taking this time advantage, this process of dynamic event, we can now jump in and put in a whole assembly of plants that will bring it to a diverse interactive stability and possibly go right through to maintenance without ever needing this event to happen again. This is taking time advantage from an animal interaction to a replant, which we can do any time we slip up on our maintenance. Just three weeks ago, the ducks were here. Now it's recovered. We've planted in the support species and extra fruit trees. We've established extra ground covers and we've got a little footpath surrounded by wood prunings, branch prunings going right the way through on contour. It's on its way and it's probably going into a permanent stable system from here on in. Food forests function as a living ecosystem and they are so diverse and so stable. And there is nothing like this in modern agriculture. Nothing as diverse, nothing as stable, nothing as fertile. The production of soil is constant. The fertility is constantly increasing. The diversity of production is non-stop. So with a food forest system, you have a system that self-replicates over time. There are no systems that produce as much per square meter for the smallest amount of inputs. This is a system that is proven even in urban agriculture. Many people have heard my quote, you can solve all the world's problems in a garden. But what a lot of people don't know about that quote is, I'm referring to food forests. They will work anywhere. And these systems give us permanent security worldwide. We just need people to realize that if we all move in this same direction, we can solve all the world's problems in our food forest gardens and supply all our needs without causing any damage whatsoever. In fact, we, humanity, can be the most beneficial element on this planet. Thank you.